guys it's Karima and welcome back to another video so in this one today we are doing a DIY patio makeover on a budget of course and I guess this will be part two a lot of people have been watching my patio makeover from last year I don't know YouTube is pushing it again I guess because it's that time of season but it's greatly appreciated now if you didn't see my patio makeover from last year go watch that I'll link it in a little eye bubble above and you can kind of see how it evolved this year so I was showing you guys we did buy a pergola we have this little seating area or space by the side of our pool that we love to sit at but don't have much cover we did have an umbrella but it broke and I decided I wanted a pergola so right now that's what my husband is doing he's putting that together that is not fun to put together so I greatly appreciate him for that Uh oh. Okay guys, so we are back. It's been a few days, um, but I'm back to finish this patio makeover and the pergola is done. I do have footage of that. I think I probably explained this already, but my camera either died, shut off, something happened, and I didn't get the entire build of the pergola but you do see my husband like start building it so this is it i absolutely love it i'll show you what it looks like with the cover on it's been so windy here but this is it with the cover on i do plan on getting a white canopy this one is tan i got this pergola from Walmart this is actually the cheapest one I could find I found one with a white canopy from Wayfair that was a pretty decent price or comparable and it sold out like as I was looking at it so I ended up buying this one but I love it and I can get a canopy for now we'll use and the reason why I want a white one because it'll match my whole setup better the tan my furniture is really like gray and I like to go with the blue and white so this is the canopy. Let me stand back so you can get a whole view of the pergola. So this is what it looks like. So now I'm just gonna clean up, finish cleaning up and put the furniture back. So I had planned on hosing down that area but it really wasn't that bad. So I just grabbed the broom and brushed off some of the weeds and sand from the sandbox and leaves and put the rug that I had down before. I did purchase this rug from Burlington Coat Factory. I don't remember the exact price. You'll have to watch the old video to find out how much it cost, but I do remember it was cheap. It was so hard to find a outdoor rug for the size I needed that wasn't expensive. So I was happy I found that one. Check out the old video for the price. So we did purchase some of those outdoor LED lights to hang around the pergola. I really wanted it to be a really nice space at night so the kids could have an area to sit and we could do like s'mores with the fire pit. I'm actually not going to buy a fire pit. I'm going to get like a fire pot is what I think they're called or a fire bowl. I think they're called fire bowls and that way I can just bring them out when the kids actually want to make s'mores. So my husband decided to put up the light for me. Apparently I wasn't putting it up to his standard. I'm just kidding, but he ended up helping me out because I was struggling a bit. He put the lights all the way around the perimeter of the pergola and I just love the way they came out. You'll see the results soon. So 
So it's been extremely windy here in Dallas recently. Not exactly sure what's going on, but it's been very windy. That's actually what happened to one of our umbrellas. It kept getting knocked over and eventually got damaged. So my husband is talking about screwing the pergola into the concrete, but for some reason, I really don't want to do that. For one, because I don't want, like what if I want to move it or change it around? I, I don't know, the idea of it being permanently stuck there bothers me. But what do you guys think? If you have a pergola, do you just set it in place and it has worked out? He feels like a good wind will be able to lift it up and flip it over. So should we screw it into the ground or do you think it will work out? All right guys, so this is what the finished product looks like. And I love it. Oh my goodness. So like I was saying before, I want to get a white canopy and this is why because it'll go better with the rug as you can see the theme is like gray white and blue so the can the tan um pretty much throws it off but that's a first world problem so you know that will come we'll switch that out eventually and girl these canopies are not cheap i think the cheapest one i've seen for just the canopy like the fabric cover was 60 bucks so we shall see but this can open up on the, the pergola let me show you guys what it looks like open forgive me if i'm making you dizzy but that's what it looks like open so if you want to get a little sun and i love the little seating area so just to give you guys a little bit of information this came as a set with the little coffee table and the bench that was from target it was 183 dollars for the set which was nice we already had the pillows. These are actually not outdoor pillows, but what I'm going to do is um, get some outdoor fabric and make my own pillowcase to go above them because I kind of just want that color theme. So I'm just leaving them out here for now. If it rains, we just bring it in the house. But that's that. The egg chairs are also from Target. Kingston is home from school. Hold on, you guys. My baby's booty is all out. Hey, Stink, you gotta put your legs down, your booty out. Yeah but the egg chairs i'll show you this one the egg chairs are from target they were 240 dollars, which is a great price for an adult size egg chair because these things are expensive they're like 500 dollars and up and i'm not exactly sure why but i was so grateful to find it in this color because it goes with my little theme the adirondack chairs we had already from aldi they were like 12 bucks at aldi last year i'm hoping we can get a few more because we want some for the garage but I want to get two more pillows for these chairs just to make them a little more comfortable we ordered a it's called a fire bowl we wanted a little pit but fire pits are crazy expensive and i wanted something small that could fit on top of the table so we're just gonna do a fire bowl so that is that then we still have the garden stools those were from aldi and right now this is the extension cord we're using for the lights i'll show you guys stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see what it looks like at night because we did hang the lights all the way around the pergola so it looks very good so don't judge me my plants died they did not survive the winter i'm not sure if i'm gonna get real plants again this was actually this was my citronella plant and this was my um, Boston Fern. Yeah, it didn't make it. None of my plants did. Look at this. Please don't judge me. I'm just, I'm not a good plant mom. So I really don't feel like I should get any more real plants. They told me succulents were easy to keep alive and yeah. I know these weren't supposed to be outside. Even when they were in the house, they were dying. I'm gonna be real. So it is what it is. I'm gonna keep all my pots because I love them. I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff. And I think I'm gonna make some of the pots into little tiki torch pots. You'll see, that'll be in the part two. This is gonna be a part two because right now I don't have everything I need to decorate, but I really, we wanted to enjoy this space. So I wanted to film it for you guys instead of waiting for everything to come in because obviously my family and myself, we wanted to enjoy, enjoy it, so. I filmed that first part, you'll see the second part when everything comes in. 
but I'm gonna make you make these into little tiki torches and I don't know maybe I'm gonna get some fake plants because apparently I can't keep real ones alive and right now I'm going to clean off this bar top because we have a dust and pollen situation going on here same thing with the table you know, I got my awesome spray a lot of dust so let's get to cleaning So guys, I ended up having to wipe everything down really good because of this pollen. This pollen is really surprising to me this year because we've been here for three years and never has it been this bad. Like I've never experienced it this bad in Texas before. So that was definitely new to me. I had to show you guys I don't know if you can see how thick the layer of pollen and dust is on top of this mini fridge oh my goodness I wrote I wiped it off here so that's why it looks like a different color but look oh my finger look at that it's hella dusty so I have to get something that I can stick up under there and clean that off because now that's gonna bother me So sorry for this really blown out footage. My husband didn't know how to adjust the settings, but he was filming Kingston because we were looking for him or rather he was looking for him and he said out the corner of his eye, he saw the crab move and come to find out Kingston was sitting in there with the top on watching his iPad. So you guys, we got some really bad news today. I don't know if you can see the pool. It's so bright out still, but it's filthy, very dirty. Well, during that snowstorm we had in February here in Dallas, it destroyed our pool pump. And apparently it happened to so many people that they are very behind on getting the part to fix it. So they're telling us that they may not be able to get the part until the end of July. So my kids are probably going to, ha if no company can get the parts to fix our pump or replace the pump, the kids will not have a pool pretty much for the whole summer, which is like, yes, it's a first world problem, but it is so depressing with it being COVID and them not really being able to go anywhere. Now we're gonna clean the leaves and things out of the pool like the grass and all of that we didn't really bother with it because the pump is what filters the water so and keeps it clean so it just won't stay clean without the pump and plus they told us at first it was going to take like three weeks to get this done and so we said we would just wait and now here it is three four weeks later and it's saying it may not be done till the end of july so I'm gonna have somebody come clean the pool, but I'm not sure what else we can do. My husband says we'll probably have to drain it because if the pump is not filtering the water, then it's just gonna turn green. 
so i don't know i don't want to think about it i just kind of want to remain hopeful that eventually the parks will become more available as the weeks go by but that's really really gonna suck if it's not fixed until the end of july all right guys so stay tuned for part two of the patio diy there's so much more that i want to do out there and i'm going to show you guys of course so there will be a part two and the reason why i do my videos like this is because it's just more realistic to my real life and i think a lot of people when we are making over spaces in our house or we're tackling and improving a space sometimes you just don't get it all done in one sitting things can get expensive so i like to do things little by little i really wanted to get that seating area done so i'm happy with that but all of like the little decor pieces will be coming so stay tuned for that now i am going to share a recipe with you guys i just cleaned my dishes so that i can start cooking kitchen is not terribly messy obviously the dishes are drying there the kids made sandwiches so i'm going to clean this off and i'm going to show you guys what we are having for dinner So I had to show you guys the basmati brown rice that I get from Aldi. This is my all time favorite brown rice by far. I don't know, all brown rice is not made the same, but this one is really good. So if you're trying to cut back on your white rice and you really don't like brown rice, give this one a try. So we're having salmon tonight for dinner and I really wanted to share this recipe with you guys because it came out so good. I had to make a glaze for it so I wanted to share what was in it. I used Dijon mustard, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, some honey, minced garlic, a little butter, oregano, creole seasoning, salt and pepper and some chicken broth. So I'm just preheating my oven to 400 degrees and then I'm going to get started on the glaze. I'm adding a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Then I will add two tablespoons of chicken broth. You can use chicken broth or white wine according to the recipe, but I didn't have white wine so I used chicken broth I'm adding one tablespoon of olive oil I like to add the olive oil first so the honey doesn't stick to the the spoon then I added two tablespoons of honey two tablespoons of Dijon mustard and gave that a good stir and now I'm going to add five cloves of minced scarlet so while the glaze is simmering on the stove, I'm gonna let that come to a boil and season my salmon. I'm just gonna put a couple of pieces of butter underneath the skin side of the salmon on the pan. I have no idea why I do this. This is not part of the recipe, but whenever I make salmon, I always put butter under the skin. That's just how I was taught to make salmon. So I put <laughs> butter under the skin and I am going to season the salmon with salt, pepper and that Creole seasoning and a little bit of oregano. So I let the glaze boil a little bit and once it was done, I'm just going to top the salmon with the glaze and put it in the oven. Now the recipe called for it you to let that boil for five to 10 minutes until it thickens up, but there's nothing in this recipe that's going to make it thick. You would have to add something to make it thick and I honestly don't want it like a gravy style marinade on mine, so I didn't do anything like that. 
Once I poured the glaze on, I'm just gonna put the salmon in the oven and I let it cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. Just a disclaimer, salmon usually cooks really quick. That was a really big piece and it was really thick. It probably was more like 25 to 30 minutes, but I just like to make sure it's done. And what I do is at the like 25 minute mark, I cut the oven off and I just let the salmon sit in the warm oven for five to 10 minutes, just so you know exactly how I make my salmon. So I'm trying to get better at cleaning up as I cook. It just makes life so much easier doing that. Now that everything is on the stove cooking and the salmon is in the oven, I can get all the countertops clean. I didn't show it, but I also put on a pot of broccoli so we could have a vegetable. So I forgot to show you what the salmon looked like before I cut it the first time, but it was so good. This is actually our second time making it like this, using this recipe. Ignore that the fact that the pan is burnt. Of course, glaze on a pan that's not only food is going to burn, but look how soft and juicy that salmon looks. It was so good and it's now a staple. This is what our plate looks like. And yeah, I hope you guys try it and let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.